Last episode, we started off with a fight between Bradley and Nessa, Loch Ness Monster Delafruit user who is fourth strongest in the crew after Tavrok, Grail and Amarelu, and also between Kai and Seamus who is a Leprechaun Delafruit user who is not one of the strongest members in the crew but has very interesting and possibly broken power. Based on lucky rolls, Nessa roughed up Bradley pretty hard to the point where Bradley had to hide on the bottom of the pool filled with Tavrok's special milk, but in the end he did finish Nessa and went to help Kai defeat Seamus, who has an ability to throw coins at his opponents, and if the attack hits, he gets to throw them again and again, and he could do this indefinitely until one of those attacks misses. With Seamus' lucky charms, Kai had to hit him with a disadvantage, and with Bell helping to hold him in place, those three won. 2v2, which means we have our pre-final matchup where Damien, Raj and Hazard will go against Cockatrice, Fenrir and El Chupacabra. Also during the 2v2, Kai flashlighted at Mossman, so the pirate would go to the light, but Tavrok grabbed Mossman in the air and slammed him into the ground, which knocked his lights out. No pun intended. Well, with the 3v3, Cockatrice just turned out to be a chicken and Fenrir had an ability to grow larger with every damage he took but him and El Chupacabra didn't show good fight and it ended with Tavrok stepping to the field, grabbing Chupa and was about to kill him but Kai stepped in as well and shot at the Minotaur man which started off our final battle with the captain of Miss Pirates. We got a little bit of fight last episode, Bradley immediately went to hide in the crowd and for a moment Hazard was panicking, having PTSD, searching for Bradley, but they figured it out later. Damien used his mirror image and baited Tavrok's stupid ass one time to waste one of his legendary actions, which is pretty big. Yokan went in close range and got her head grabbed by Minotaur Man and smashed against the ground. Taiga went in as well and did pretty good damage but got slammed as well. Kai used Zephyr to dash away and shoot his shots from afar which is pretty smart and also sent Bell close to Mako. On that note, episode 25 ends and let's Roll episode 26. But before we go any further, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. According to this statistic below, 70.5% of you who are watching it right now are not subscribed. So please subscribe right now. Also, hit the bell so you would get notified whenever the new video will come out. According to this statistic, only 12% of all my subs turn their bell on. Let's get this number to at least 30, I would highly appreciate it. Also, join my Discord where you would get exclusive stuff and where you could even chat with me. Link would be in the description below. Fight! I think last episode I said that Yokan was picked up, but actually she was not, so she and Taiga are unconscious at the moment, but immediately are picked up by Hazer, which is great. Taiga mentions that he saw Grim Reaper like three times already, and Damien, seeing in what condition Taiga is, orders him to chill out and just stay away from the fight. So Taiga just finds a chair and just sits one out there. Yokan, remembering her grandpa and their meditation sessions, heals herself and chills out for a round as well. Bradley, as always, Stealthy and healthy and shooting Tavrok from the crowd, taking people's hats and sunglasses to hide once again. Hazard tries to hold person on Tavrok but fails uh, and hides behind Raj. Kai gets even further from Tavrok but because he is a ranger he can shoot very far uh, so he has his distance covered and is pretty safe. Damien is zipping around Thunder gauntlets out, booming Tavrok and casting disadvantage on hitting everyone else around beside himself. Bell finds keychains and frees Yeti Beast who is of course Kai's dear grandpa. 
Chupacabra deals some damage to Tavrok again, but he takes Chupa and slams him into the ground, knocking him out. Bell also decides to hide and goes under the desk of commentators who are part of Tavrok's crew but have no Dell fruits. One of them is Chase Maverick, and he and his colleague are chained up to that desk like the whole crowd to their seats. Tavro goes for Raj and Raj has his reaction of teleporting away that he can use but seeing Heather behind him decides to not react and take the hit on but Tavro critically fails and Raj takes Heather and moves to the side making Tavro land right before recently freed and enraged Mako. Everyone in the group keeping their distance which was a very good and smart strategy and that way that dealt a huge amount of damage to Tavrok with not a lot of losses. Damien is wondering how Mako got freed and Kai just says that it's Belle, she's a crab, but also adds that he has a plan for this situation. Mako blindly swinging, sees Tavrok right in front of him and just smashes him in the face, chipping away one of his horns, dealing huge amounts of damage. Barely, for some reason, I guess seeing that Tarok is low, decides to go out of his stealth, dashes to Tarok and hits him with a sneaky knee to the back. Heather not doing anything this fight gets inspired by Barely and casts hold person on Tarok but it doesn't work. Barely gets grabbed by Tarok and smashed into the ground. Honestly, I think he needed to stay away and being hidden in the crowd, but as Briggs also mentioned when Bradley is hidden, he can't really talk, so maybe Briggs decided to go out of stance to be more engaged like the rest of the group. Tarok also hits Mako, Mako then hits Bradley and takes him out. At that moment, three people burst into the arena and they are not Jiro. They are three fishmen who were on the stairs on the entrance to the monster slam. But then Kai, shooting his spear, critically hits Tavrok into the right eye, assisting Damien, who lands the last shot on this tyrant and finishes him off, killing Tavrok, the captain of the Miss Pirates 300 million belly man. It's kind of beautiful how duo of Kai and Damien was the one to deal the final two shots. I just love when they cooperate like that. Also, let's not forget Mako, who dealt like 80 plus damage to Tavrok in a span of two attacks, which is insane. Also, Mako is huge, by the way. Tavrok is already like 18 feet tall, and Mako is twice as large as Tavrok. So it makes him like 36 feet, but also it's like one piece height, so perspectives change frequently. Well, Tarok is gone now, and those three fishmen seeing him go down decide that there is no more point in fighting and just decide to leave and they dash away. Apparently, Miss Pirates had an alliance with Bloodfin Pirates, which is the name of the crew, whose captain is Bally's dad. The goal of those three was to defend Tavrok, but he died, so they just decided to leave. Damien, seeing them running, tells Rush to go after them, and he himself, leaving Mako on the rest of the group, joins Rush in chasing Bloodfin Pirates. Heather also picks up Bradley. Uh, remember when I told you when Kai had a plan for Mako? Well, his plan was like, as Rust de described it, Scarlett Johansson and Hulk it, which basically Kai did. He talked to the old man Mako inside of the Yeti Beast, trying to remember his grandson and Rustage would allow it to work only if Kai rolled a 20, which he didn't, he rolled 15, which was good anyway, but not good enough. And we don't have Mako, we still have Yeti Beast raging around. Yokan attacks him, but not lethally because this is Ajiro's father and she doesn't want to hurt a man who helped create Jiro. Uh, also, in the process, killing most men while critically failing. Prelly tells Hazard to go hide because Mako will fuck them up, but what Hazard does is she casts whole person on Mako, which works because Mako's wisdom is bad in a yeti form, so everyone gets advantage on attacks and if they hit, they automatically crit. 
so they deal a lot of damage like that. On the other side we have Damien casting a spell which thunder strikes bluffing pirates, stopping them, which almost kills goons but deals small enough damage to Saber who is a lieutenant in that pirate crew and the main guy there out of them three. His special ability is similar to Seamus's in the way that if he gets to hit one of his attacks he will get to attack one more time but with a lower to hit AC and his damage will be bigger and if he gets to hit enough times, next attack will kill the opponent automatically. He has 10 different attacks names for his sequential rolls. It starts with slash, then stab, cut, chop, ran, saw, pierce, butcher and sever. Chop is 4th one but ran is 6th one so we don't know 5th one but it doesn't actually matter because Saber didn't hit his shots with Damien being there and casting disadvantage on everyone around. The other two are Scale and Gops. Gops had some sort of chain wisdom but Scale trying to hit Damien critically failed and killed Gops with his own scales. He throws his scales uh, and Raj and Saber are having a cool sword clash with Saber parrying Raj's attacks and Raj using his twin blades. Meanwhile our boys are dealing with Mako. On his roll he gets out of Hazard's whole person but luckily cannot do anything else. Bradley is casting ranged fishman karate attacks that Briggs describes like a little Kamehameha. Hazard does cast a whole person again and Mako fails wisdom save again so we have crit hits again. Yokan and Kai do a lot of damage with Bell coming too, clawing on that beast. Mako this time fails to go out of whole person so they deal a ton of damage again. El Chupacabra by the way failed 3 death saving rolls and unfortunately dies. RIP El Chupacabra. Thanks for helping in that fight against Tavrok, but anyways, such a clutch from Hazard, honestly an MVP in a fight against Mako. Bradley still attacks with his own water Kamehameha, Yokan attacking with her elbow Tonfest and, and Kai finishing off Mako with his spear, stabbing him into the side and not lethally of course, taking him out. Mako turns back into the frail old man Mako. Kai leaves Hazard to look after his grandpa while he decides to Viking style burn alive and give funeral to Mossman and El Chupacabra. Belly is very wounded and goes around freeing people from chains. Yokan though is full on dashing after Damien trying to help in that fight. Rastage by the way is losing it with Saber not hitting a lot because of disadvantage Damien casts. For some reason Scale is holding up longer than expected but falls to Damien's gauntlets in the end and Damien wanting only one left kills Scale. What was overseen in that episode I feel like is when Yolkan joined the fight after dashing like 180 feet and immediately pummeled Saber with 33 damage in one attack. Like what the fuck. At some point Saber double critically fails which is just hilarious and funny. I think I will clip those moments and put it on shorts, so check it out when it will uh, be out. Anyways, Rush cleans it up and knocks out Saber and then the episode 26 ends right there, to be continued. Also when Tavrok died, uh, there was a huge rumbling noise outside, so it's probably Labyrinth being, Labyrinth's walls being taken down. Yeah. So, 